Hey guys, today we are working on the second portrait in our cute little series. This is going to be ecstasy. Sorry. Let me bring it up for you. This team. This is today's portrait. This is AI's definition of ecstasy. So, today, we're capturing this. I'm excited. There we go. Let's get this up here. Perfect. Okay. Where's my tools? Good morning, guys. Jamie, Sam, RC, Diane, Arva. Welcome on in. Okay, so if you were around yesterday, and that's fantastic, we were doing Envy. Now, to mix it up and create that little bit of contrast, we're on Ecstasy. Ecstasy. G'day, Erica. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, AI was given 10 to 15 seconds to make this picture. Like I was saying yesterday, I get one day, and that's a fair compromise, being that AI gets all the intelligence of the human race. <laughs> now, scribbling. Bear in mind that these scribbles aren't trying to create the picture as much as they are. Just me understand the facets the space. I really feel like yesterday we captured something pretty special. I really feel like Envy was borderline everything we set out to do with this project. It's going to be interesting to see whether an emotion as bold as ecstasy if we can capture it, or if we stand to fail. You never know. It's such a bold emotion, whereas envy is a little bit more fringe. So we play a big risk attacking one as important as this. And it's much more linear. It, envy had the sort of viewing point off to the side, whereas ecstasy is direct and straight up and down, which is quite unique. Hey Bertie, how we doing? And Joy, welcome on in. If you missed it guys, today we're doing AI's depiction of ecstasy. There's this cupping of the face. I actually cropped it a wee bit. His hands were in it, pushing his face up. I kept the palms because I feel like that's quite important for the movement of the picture. It keeps that vertical style in it.
All right. All right, all right, all right. Why don't you become an art instructor? Um, I feel like I can reach people here <laughs> on different live platforms and sharing the full uh, um, replay videos. And I love making my own art and sharing that process. Whereas as an instructor, you're watching someone else make art and giving them suggestions. So maybe later in life. And yeah, great reasons. The fact that you're doing this with a marker and not care of messing up is why. Look, I'm terrified of messing up, but bear in mind that this is just nothing to do with trying to, under, uh, trying to create the image as a blueprint. All we're doing here, all I'm doing here, is literally getting a feel for the shapes, shadows, and moments in the picture, allowing that to uh, empower it. There we go. Beautiful. Happy Y Thingy Day. Thanks, guys. For those who don't know from anywhere you are in the world, it's Y Thingy Day in New Zealand, which marks the day in which a treaty was signed between the indigenous people of New Zealand and the Crown. It's a really important day for New Zealand. It used to be called New Zealand Day, I think. But we call it the Y Thingy Day. But it's arguably, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if it actually coined is, but it is one of New Zealand's most significant holidays. If not the most significant. Cool. That'll do. That'll do. Um, it's not technically Sharpie, although I see the temptation to do that. This is actually a uh, acrylic pen. So instead of it being ink that would go on the surface, the problem with ink for archival reasons is that it will um, slowly turn to that, you've seen it before, that purple tannish colour as it loses the intensity of its pigment. This is archival, so if any of this stays exposed on the gesso, it'll last far, far longer than a Sharpie would. So this is a good tool. Okay. Now, in light of it being ecstasy, this portrait here doesn't have those underlying um, greens and blues like Envy did. What we want to be doing here, there's a, there is a teeny bit of tealy green underneath but that'll come out in later layers. Where we actually want to be is in our reds and our browns and all of our ochres. That's where the dream's going to be. So, into the ochres. Let's track them down. Here we go. What's this? Burnt amber. And wild thing. Hey, Larissa. Hey, Lauren. Um... Celebrating vicariously? Thanks, Jenny. Kenny. Um, I ran out of plates yesterday. And I forgot to get more. So I popped over to a local coffee shop. Popped over to a local coffee shop. And I bought a bunch of their takeaway cups. So we've got five cups to work with. They sold me five cups for $2.50. Sweetheart. And then we have our mix over here. Beautiful. And then we need our big brush. Or is this too big? We have our proper paint brushes today. Which is exciting. Aloha Max. There 
here we go. There we go. It's been a while. Yeah, Max. Things going fantastically with me. Fantastic. We're here doing uh, a series of AI pictures at the moment. So the AI pictures we're doing, the AI pictures we're working on, have been generated by a computer. I give it an emotion, an input. It gives me back a picture, and then I'm painting from that picture. So then side by side, we've got the AI, the collective consciousness of all the human race, giving its rendition of envy, ecstasy, happiness, joy. And then we have the human interpretation of the same style. So this one here is a bold one. This is ecstasy. straight on the face too, which makes it very interesting. More, more, more. Maximilius, one of my paintings in your office. Which one? Santa Claus? <laughs> Not Santa Claus. Well, you know what? Maybe Santa Claus does feel a lot of joy when he uh, delivers presents. So maybe. Maybe. Hey, Jay. Oh, you need one of my paintings in your office. I thought you said you've noticed one of my paintings in your office. And I was gonna say, which one? Yeah, of course. You know where to find it. It's the uh, link in the bio. And from there, you'll find everything you need. There's replays, there's commission links, print links. No prints currently available. Um, not until mid this month. And YouTube replays, Twitter, Facebook, all the things, all the things. We'll just hang out here for now. You can grab that stuff later. <laughs> There's currently, I love that idea. That's fantastic. Put a roof over my head but there's currently nothing for sale. The uh, studio's sold out. So you gotta order a commission currently. But we are working on this new collection right now. And also, also, prints will be up in about 10, 15 days. So, opportunities all over the show. Perfect. We're going to swap down a size and get some Venetian red. So here's our new size. Voila. Now you'll notice this is actually not a regular paintbrush. This is a makeup brush. 
the reason I like makeup brushes, and cheers, Max. Appreciate you. I like makeup brushes because the bristle count is very high and its ability to hold a lot of what has very, very thin viscosity in the brush is higher. So when you paint, you can get more paint spread out further, basically. Um, and hello, Pink, and Victoria. Lovely to see you, Vic. We've got the whole team back in town. And Max, if you get tired of waiting for me as well, you can uh, message me direct, sibgower at gmail. That email should be on the website as well. But that's a direct feed to me. Sometimes things get lost, especially in the sea of social media, my lord. My lord, social media. What a beast. What a place to lose things. Now, guys, if you're just joining us, we're painting an emotion, a picture generated by an AI. If you know what it is, don't tell those who are joining in, make them guess. Sounds cruel, but it's more actually interesting for us to see what new opinions we'll see in the picture um, and realize that it's not a cluster of emotions. Don't, don't give us three or four things unless you're musing on what it could be. This is specifically one emotion. And I've been really intrigued, like yesterday when we did Envy, some people picked it off the bat and saw Envy, which was crazy. Out of the spectrum and complexity of human emotions, to leap on and see the emotion we're setting out to capture, it's quite special. The thing I like about this one is the color palette that the AI chose and the angle, everything to do with it. I can see the emotion that it was going for, but at the same time, it's more cryptic. I like that. Pain, discomfort, interesting, interesting, no. No. But you know what? Actually, it's funny you say that because some people might associate the two. So that's actually, that's extremely interesting. Me and those who know right now are thinking, interesting. And you can see now with the smaller brush, I can capture more intricate details and just play with it. Another beautiful quality of makeup tools is brushes actually are designed to only go one direction, to paint strokes. That's why they're flat, so they'll be squished, almost like a rectangle if you look directly onto them. Now with makeup tools, they're not like that. They're actually circular. So makeup tools can be used directly on the surface. And because of that, a brush has to go in brush strokes. Whereas a makeup tool can go in any direction at any time. For those who know Crash Team Racing, imagine a brush is like tiny, while a makeup tool is like Coco. You're handling skyrockets which is uh, in the case of painting handling is far more important than top speed you, you do lose top speed with makeup tools that's a fact so my ability to make out faster is deterred but my ability to do a mark more accurately is increased How do you decide to use a cup? Well, in this case here, I ran out of plates. 
So I went across the coffee shop across the road and I said, I've got a weird request for you. And she looked at me super skeptically. And she said, what is it? And I said, I need to buy five of your takeaway cups. And she says, oh, that's not bad at all, $2.50. And now I've got five cups. But usually I prefer plates because everything's more open and obvious. You can see your colors easier to mix them, but cups are more contained as well. And plus, it sort of helps me because as I'm holding it, I feel like I'm holding a coffee. I have to resist the urge to sip it, certainly. Grief. Not quite. And sometimes I think in the emotion, we sometimes see, not because we're feeling it, but sometimes we see what we want to see. I have a predisposition to try and see the best of a lot of paintings and spot where the pleasure, happiness or story might be. Whether it's there or not, heartbreak. Interesting. And no. These ideas are all dancing around the uh, negative spectrum. So that's going to make the actual subject matter even more intriguing for you. And I think what's interesting about it is the things we look for when acknowledging feelings, which we haven't obviously captured yet in this picture. Um, the longest time I've spent on a work. Mm. The longest time I've spent on a work. Um, spent upwards of 40 hours on a piece one time, a commission. And I was trying to create some children. And then after the entire process, I just could not thread the needle to the point we actually had to call the commission off. I said, no, this is not how I wanted it to be. You cannot have this. Sometimes that happens, guys. Time, time does not make artwork better. In fact, the longer you're there for, without producing the result, usually means the more strangled, controlled an artwork becomes to the point where actually you can't see that crazy vitality that it should have had, that it should have started with, lost it. Hey Steve, children are tough to draw. Children are tough to draw. Well, that's because I've got none of the uh, defining characteristics that paint becomes so fun to try and capture. And that's okay. You paint daily. How fast is your selling process based on production? Well, before I answer that question, I would say for every artist out there listening, completely irrelevant, completely irrelevant to the art you're making. Van Gogh sold two pieces before his uh, light went out. And no one's arguing whether Van Gogh's the goat or not. He sold other people's art because he couldn't sell his own. So the sale of art's irrelevant to the artist. Please, 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 if you're a creative, get that through your head and don't ever forget it. For me personally, this is the new collection we're working on. So until it's finished, it's not for sale. But we'll be released together. And apart from that, the rest of the studio is sold out. But I need to reiterate, 
that that has nothing to do with success that is irrelevant. It's not amazing. I'm sorry, Teddy. Tabby, it's an irrelevance. What is relevant, what is relevant is how much expression and passion goes into the projects. Is it fulfilling the artist? I mean, think about it this way. Imagine you'd found something that sells well. Maybe you paint flowers at farmer's markets and people love them and buy them. And you pay your way with this, but every time you paint it, it's not you anymore and a little bit of your soul dies. You do that for 40 years, producing these flowers that sell well, these farmer's markets, everyone buys them. Are you an artist? Artist, you sound more like a hired gun. You sound more broken. Although people love the flowers, have you actually achieved what you set out as an artist? Um, and looking back on it, do you look on back on it with happiness and satisfaction or do you look back on it with a sort of broken view? Point being, a lot of people are out there selling art and not doing what they want. And if it came down to a trade between expressing yourself in a raw, authentic, crazy portrait or landscape or style and producing income from it, please, please, please take that job at the cafe and make the artwork the way you want to make it. And just like a collector of art, don't listen to other people's tastes. You don't go to a restaurant and panic and think, I want to order what everyone else is ordering, unless you're trying to find the food with the highest turnover to make sure it's fresh. <laughs> but in terms of taste, you look at the menu and decide what you want, and you're fairly confident on what you choose. And yet for some reason, we take a very different stance with art. We either avoid it altogether, or when we do see it, we hope someone else can tell us what we should like. How atrocious. Get what you like. And why would it be any different to ordering food? Thanks, Sam. Appreciate that. But I won't appeal to everyone. My loose, emotional, primal, wild strokes could annoy you. My brash approach to detail, my use of natural materials rather than stronger, steadfast chemicals. There's a lot of reasons not to like me as an artist. So you're never gonna be everyone's bread and butter. Even Damien Hirst, one of the most famous painters of today, <laughs> you look at the uh, comments on any of his Instagram posts, there's a lot of hate. And it's not because Damien Hirst is someone who's hated, he's widely loved. It's because everyone's got different tastes. And that is okay. I come across things in my life that I'm like, I don't like that. But you know what I do when I find something I don't like? I usually acknowledge why I don't like it, figure out and learn about myself better, and then move on with my life. <laughs> and that is a talent which these days I see falling away. Now, yeah, it's going well. It's like our little, uh, that's our little oxide cup. We'll put that one down there. Now, just like our previous portrait, this one actually has turquoise in it, which is interesting. That two very different emotions would share colors. I 
after this one, we might migrate back in the direction of chiseling in some black, but we'll see. We will see. Thanks for the insight. Oh, thanks, Rob. Yeah. That's one thing, if you've read art books, <laughs> one thing you'll notice is most of the artists will have a little section on talking about be careful pandering to what you think everyone else wants. And like uh, Henry Ford says, if I had asked everyone what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. <laughs> if you don't know who Henry Ford is, Henry Ford invented the car. I would have been one of the guys that asked Henry for faster horses. <laughs> I know it. I definitely would have been. Said, yeah. Enjoying his horses on the wrong side of history. My partner's a horse rider, so I would have been backing her and been like, nah, bro, stop it with these machines. We want a really fast horse. Design that new saddle. Stop all this nonsense. That's one of my favorite quotes though. Such a good quote. If I had asked the people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. So you can see some of those black lines still showing up underneath the work. But they're less relevant now. I see they were guiding us to understand our portrait better. They weren't fundamental to the construction of understanding how this face would come together. You know, the most I've ever personally spent on a piece of artwork was from one of my close friends. I spent $2,000 He's a digital artist, and he wouldn't let me pay that much. I tried to say, it's not worth that, it's not worth that. And I told him, you're wrong. I believe it is, and you need to realize that it is. And it's my favorite piece of art that I own. So I don't come here and tell you guys about taste without having walked that walk myself. Pursue your own tastes. <laughs> Ball seven times get up eight. Sounds like a boxing quote. Thanks, Tebby. Well, I'm glad I can be here doing that for you, and I hope that I don't get excited and laugh too loudly and start giving you anxiety. But, well, you're here, Tebby. If you don't know already, have you guessed the emotion? I think the next one, I'm not going to tell anyone. If you know, actually, if you know this one already, don't tell anyone. You're in the know, stay in that space. We're going to keep this one a secret till the end. So if you were here and you heard it, keep that information. That's between you and I now. And let's keep these emotions a mystery.
if someone does guess it, we'll like let a, enough time pass <laughs> and then be like, someone got it. But a long enough period that no one will know what chance it was that got it. Because the important thing here about emotions, capturing emotions, isn't so much about the uh, about the V V V. Singular motion that's captured, but the debate on what the viewer sees, because there's two things here. There's the creator, the person making the artwork and the intentions behind that. And then there's the viewer. And the viewer's actually an axis that's constantly changing. And so the question about how good the art is, is not a question of how many viewers like it. It's a question of how close the axes of the artist's creation and intention matches the viewer's interpretation. And when that axis is direct, such that the connection between the artist and viewers is the strongest, the arts finally served its purpose. That's the goal. Hey Taylor, how you doing? Well, a lot of people jump on here, Taylor, and watch me paint for a little bit, and don't think I do paint. They'll say, he is useless. Um, no, so after uh, Cobb Taylor, back in maybe, after setting up Christchurch in Dunedin, it was time for me to move out of Cobb & Co and pursue art full time. I used to paint in the uh, storage sheds of the Cobb & Co in Christchurch in Dunedin to try and keep up. And now, now I'm in the studio doing it. And today, we're capturing an emotion. Oh, that's cool, Taylor. Um, we're capturing an emotion, but we're not gonna tell you what it is. You have to guess. You have to guess. So what's happened here, and to give you a clue, I've asked AI for a picture. I've asked AI for a picture, and AI has produced me the culmination of human understandings, interpretation of a singular emotion. And then from that emotion, I'm gonna create the portrait. So if I show you the picture, it'll be a bit much of a giveaway. But it's a fun one. It's a fun one. It's already been fun. After this color, we might dice back into some black. We'll see. Jules, always a pleasure, never a chore. How you doing, Jules? And Jules, fantastic actually, you weren't here at the start. We're painting a uh, emotion again today. But this time, aside from those who got told early, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. You gotta get it. Cheers, Jay, I appreciate that. Phenomenal woman, great name by the way. You are not useless at all. You are bringing attention to emotion and expressing passion. All right, powerful, powerful. Um, I don't think I'm useless, but uh, attention being drawn towards the more primal aspects 
of life is one of the most essential things that could happen right now in 2024. We're so deeply caught up in, I mean, we've now got glasses that go on your face and augment the reality around us. People are on, surf, uh, on skateboards and bikes and walking around town inside digital worlds. This is no longer a sci-fi thing that we joke about. This is the world we now live in. And I'm not saying these things are bad things. These are incredible steps in technology. But, but, that doesn't mean we're not monkeys and we're not in love with something deeply primal to get our blood pumping, to feel vitality and passion. Joe likes the colors. See, this one here has got a far, far simpler color palette. And that's going to be the beauty in it. That instead of it being this explosion of tones, the simplistic nature of it is going to add a purity to the emotion, which is going to be really intriguing. Um, ooh, a couple of questions here. I think it's really important to make people feel something. Feel something, but also, uh, aside from just trying to make people feel, art's not about making you feel something. That's not forcing you to feel something. You don't walk into a gallery and have the feeling, get a feeling washed over you. Some people are numb to it. So art's not the feeling itself. Art's the catalyst or the tool that allows you to embellish and enjoy feelings. That's very different. Um, it's a means. It's a means to pleasure rather than an actual um, piece of pleasure in itself. It's like the thing that gives you that little boost of coffee without actually being the coffee. And sorry, Catty, I'm 12th of January, so you can work out my star sign from that. And Jamie, yes, it's one word. Taylor, colors are picked actually in this case by AI. I'm accentuating certain colors, in this case the teal, but largely I've asked AI to generate emotions and now I'm reproducing those emotions. There's a collaboration with AI. Don't worry, you'll see everything. You'll see the picture that AI's made. You'll see my rendition of the picture before the end of the day. Before the end of the day. AI got 10 seconds to make that picture. I'm giving myself <laughs> one day. But um, the color palette, usually though, Taylor, what I say is, um, when it comes to choosing a color palette, there's two things to do. Accept a little bit of randomness and a little bit of chaos. And have a deep understanding of color. A passion for it. No one's born a natural at choosing colors. But if you study color, there's a great book for it. It's quite therapeutic. Very. Some people might say very boring, but I love it. It's called The Secret Lives of Color. And it will tell you all about different pigments and how they came into existence and understand their relationship to each other through history. Why would you want to read that? Well, a deeper understanding of each color will influence your choices that you make. Which colors you use, which colors you don't use, which colors are your favorite. It'd be like, to really have a good relationship with someone, what's important? History, context, stories, experience. Color's no different. I've got a real soft spot for ultramarine blue because of its historical story. Um, without that historical story, ultramarine blue would mean far less to me. I'd probably prefer baby blue.
There we go. <laughs> go for it, Taylor. Secret Lives of Color. When I first read it, I didn't like it. When I read it the second time, it was phenomenal. Put down our teal cup now. There we go. All right. Coming in with a definer. Black. Powerful. The problem with black, guys, is it's addictive. This color will define everything in your painting and empower it. Once you understand that, you'll usually overuse black in this crusade to define your art. Um, no, Jamie. A couple of people know us, but no one's guessed it. Get this brush here. Here we go. We're going to go to a slightly smaller brush. Voila. <clears throat> and bear in mind too, Jamie, that the emotion's going to slowly appear. Just like Envy. Envy didn't reveal itself off the bat to everyone. Envy slowly incepted itself. Insidiously sort of just appeared. It was a really special piece. That was a real journey for everyone involved. I wasn't expecting it to, um, well, I wasn't expecting that to go the direction it did. So it was a real treat. That's part of the thing I like most about art too, is that we come in here, we take quite a random approach. What we're painting, I don't get to meditate or plan on it. We're just in here doing it, which is part of the beauty behind these pieces. The lack of premeditation, the lack of control, makes the actual result, I wouldn't say more random, but certainly more chaotic. That human touch is what makes it most beautiful. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie is dancing awfully close to the fire. But that's great, Jamie, because you've been here for a while now. If you're seeing that, that means we are on a juicy juicy road whether we can maintain this direction we're currently heading in the right one but we experience competing and conflicting emotions fair enough well the beauty behind art though is we can grab certain emotions like in this case a singular emotion exacerbate and make it more extreme just like your flavor palette, you can enjoy multiple different foods. But we as an artist can grab one flavor, send it to the scar, send it to the stars, and allow you to really examine and taste it. You don't really want art to be everything, everywhere, all at once. You want art to serve you, serve one powerful purpose in your life, to energize, to remind, Beautiful. Now, I say in the earlier team, but in case anyone missed it, there's a few people here who've been here from the start, like Jules and Victoria and J uh, Jay Smith. 
who are like, oh, no one missed it, we all know. This paint, and the reason why I can use it inside, is it's completely chemical free. So I've got guar gum as the binder inside the pigment with the pigments themselves, which are powdered pigments, and they, none of them have heavy metals, nothing dangerous in them. And then we have uh, a little bit of water, and that's what makes this pigment paste. And then we've got this, which is a mixture of egg yolk from a style called egg tempera, and a uh, little bit of distilled water. Distilled water removes all the uh, minerals and things like that from it to increase the longevity of the work. So nothing that we're using right now has anything that off gases and fumes. It's all just pure, which makes the artwork itself more pure. Something from nature, of nature, makes it more pure. Um, I love the fact that we're seeing a huge spectrum here, team. Can you see that literally in one chat box, we've got pain, grief, loss, pleasure, and euphoria. Pleasure. So we've got literally the, the two sides of the spectrum, which is interesting because, especially in terms of pleasure and pain, some people would say that there is a little bit of each in the other, almost like a yin-yang. Now, those aren't quite the right answers but you're desperately close. I just hope that I can maintain what we've captured so far and keep that continuity to allow us to actually exacerbate what you're seeing. I love the word exacerbate in art too, because that's what we're doing here exacerbating a feeling. Regret, despair, powerful words. Close to pleasure and pain, and then you say hope. Interesting. It's not hope, although it does have, with the linear aspect to it and the whites, this feeling of sort of uh, spirituality or religion, and that hope feel, but no, no, it's not. It must be fun for the few people in here who know it. <laughs> Just watching the guesses come in. relish in this for a moment we're going to relish in this for a moment and then everyone in the group now because only, there's only 61 of us here we're going to keep it as a secret together okay Sasha just got it <laughs> the emotion we're capturing right now 
is ecstasy. And I'll show you the uh, AI's rendition while we're here. This is what AI believes the true form of ecstasy is. Well, Sasha, you got it. And part of the uh, emotion that's in there, we're talking about pain, pleasure, happiness, despair. Some people will see pain and despair, while others see happiness and pleasure. The action of raising one's head and being lost in something, we both do for intense pain and intense pleasure. The thing that gives away the ecstasy, the thing that gives away the ecstasy as it slowly comes in is the hands. So when you're in pain, you can tort and you go up. When you're in ecstasy, the hands have had time to come up. The feeling fills in and then he feels it. And without the whole hands, we don't get that immediate understanding, but you can see it cupping his face and lifting him up. And uh, once you see that, suddenly this line between pain and pleasure, happiness, despair, you're like, I do start to feel that this character, this old man, for some reason in this current moment in his life, is feeling that ecstasy. That's what we're after even if you said it as a joke. If you said it as a joke, you said it because you're like, well, this is the complete opposite to what I see. Which, like the yin yang, is just 100% correct. But there'll always be that aspect of pain captured in this work as well, just like pleasure. So long as we always have both, we're on the right track. A little yin yang, a little bit of both. Okay. Now, for the crew that's here, you've now entered the mouse trap. You're all in it with me. When the next person comes in and they ask for what it is, don't tell them. Put them through the same, uh, <laughs> let's put them through the same little workshop that uh, you just got put through. But I love it how, even with these simplistic brush strokes that we've got, People are spotting those two extremes. We didn't get any pain calls, any uh, ecstasy calls, any of these sorts of things for yesterday's one. So we're doing something right with these portraits. There is some sort of essence that we're um, transposing here, which is beautiful. Can't have pleasure without pain. This is true. This is true. They are very much so two sides of the same coin. When I get a uh, back massage, I hate it when it's too light. I love that intense pressure. Sometimes bordering on too much pressure, like a sports massage. And that, uh, that's just how I like it. So very much so I understand where you're coming from. Perfect. Over this side. Why do 
Urbana. Cheers, Joey. Let's put down this one. Wipe down this brush. Unless. Let's grab the white and dance into greys. Yeah, greys what we're after. Hello. Oh my God. For a second there, I thought you were one of my old high school buddies. Hi Melvin, how we doing? You've walked in on a portrait bin, mate. If anyone new here is wondering what's happening, we're capturing a singular emotion. Singular. We might trade onto a smaller brush here too. Is it Willie Nelson? You know what? I think Willie Nelson has felt the emotion we're after many, many times. <laughs> but it's not Willie. But I can see how you'd see Willie. Love his music. Favorite song by Willie Nelson, Maria. Shut up and kiss me. Stop playing, stand up and hold me. I know you're gonna miss me. You need me, believe me. How often do you answer the same questions and does it bug you? Not that often actually. Um, we've got a cool group of people in here that actually sometimes after I've answered a question two or three times or if it's been asked in previous streams, one of the fans or one of the good friends in here leap on it and on the road against great song. And we all sort of take a little bit of the turn together. So. We're very, very open to new people jumping in here and asking questions and being a part of things. And I don't think anyone gets exhausted by things. I was exhausting myself personally when I was, um, I had this little routine I'd do in between where I'd be like, if you want to connect more, jump on my socials. Honestly, we're all grown adults or we're human beings using social media. If you want to find more I'm not sure what your screen looks like, but you can find where to click. So we just dropped that whole routine. Shamrock Green. I like that. I like the name Shamrock Green. Is this a portrait of someone noble to New Zealand? No. It's a picture generated by AI to simulize a singular emotion. A singular emotion. And that emotion has been generated into a portrait and then I am painting that portrait. That's what's happening here. How is name the style you paint? I can only assume you were so excited when you were typing that. 
that, that explains the typos. <laughs> um, my style of painting's fairly unique. I know every artist says that. <laughs> We're all unique. Um, this style of painting, we've got some quirky things we do here. So for these portraits here, I'm making faces with literal makeup tools. And then in terms of the actual color palette that I'm using, um, all the stuff I'm using is completely chemical free. So it's pigment paste, guar gum, uh, egg yolk, all this basic stuff, but it's completely archival. So it will last for hundreds of years. It's all prepped properly. The one exception to the chemical free is the base coat on the uh, actual surface I'm painting. What I've done with that is it's got what's called gesso on it, an acrylic polymer, almost like a plastic. Now this is, I don't want to say unavoidable, but if I didn't use that, it wouldn't last for centuries. It would last for years. And part of the beauty in artwork is the potential for beauty to be prolonged. It doesn't need to last permanently. Of course, Last Supper was made with similar techniques with the egg and has lasted for almost 2,000 years. But the technique of removing all the chemical substances, because actually a lot of them yellow over time, allows the art to be more pure and raw. There's a primal element to it. So I suppose if you were to put one tagline on it, you'd say pure, pure primal impressionism. Pure in that we've removed everything that's not natural. We've gone natural pigments, we've gone natural materials, we've removed all these synthetic nonsense elements. And then primal, in that the artwork's so rudimentary, it's like, I'm, I'm a, I like to imagine I'm like a caveman sketching on the wall. Rudimentary? Because we could use a tablet to make these now, and yet we opt to be here in person. We opt to make this with our hands. We opt to create art in a way which is inferior to what a tablet could do. But we choose to be here, creating with our hands in a very raw sense. And then, Impressionism. Because, at a glance, the art's impressionistic. Some answers are simple. <laughs> um, great question, John. Gesso with a J. So, well, that's just how I say it anyway. Could be gesso. I've always said gesso. Kind of like gif. Gesso, gesso. It's probably gesso, like gif. No, but it's supposed to be jif. Gesso. I say gesso. Um... If that's incorrect, don't tell me, because even if it is, I'm not changing. No one would get offended. I just look silly, that's all. Um, okay, so with the pigments, you can do it quite easily, even at your local art store. Now you do need to isolate things from your palette. So, for example, you'll be limited on certain colours. A lot of colours have synthetic counterparts or are made synthetically, whereas a lot of things, an easy place to start is something called earth pigments. Earth pigments are literally soils or um, clays and minerals from the earth. So earth pigments are great because typically, in most cases, it's easier to use the real version than it is to create a synthetic version. So, you can look at the back of a tube Say, for example, I'll grab this one. Do, 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 do. Where did I throw it? Ah, oh, here we go. Great example. We've got white. This one contains PW6. That's the name of the pigment. And that pigment is titanium white. PW6 is titanium white. Now, Examples of synthetic pigments usually come in with things like ultramarine, which breaks your heart. <laughs> but um, typically, if you stick to earth pigments, you're on the natural buzz. 
Um, chatbot GBT, you can ask chatbot which pigments are synthetic and which ones aren't. You don't have to go full um, natural pigment, but leaning towards it and opting for the natural when there's an option, take it, take it. Because although no one might ever notice or care you, when you look at your creation, you'll know. And at the end of the day, if you're not making the art to satisfy something deep in you, you'd have to wonder why you're making the art at all. There's easier ways to make a dollar. If it's not providing you with some deep, innate satisfaction, a new career is needed ASAP. And I see so many artists out there berating themselves for their crafts when they actually hate what they do. It's so common. And I feel like you betray the collector as well. Betray the person who wants to own the art because they've purchased it with the knowledge that actually you've put passion and love behind it when actually what you put behind it was pain, grueling process and grief. Do you think being an artist is a talent or hard work? I think Picasso's funny. He painted it. He says, I painted 18 hours a day. Well, I painted 12 hours a day and everyone tells me it's natural talent or something. It's a mixture. It's a mixture, but everyone thinks that the natural talent part is what matters the most when it's not the case. What matters the most is your love for it. Your love for it is so meaningful because since you're dealing with expressions, you can't fake that. You could, but they're going to find out. There needs to be something raw and authentic to your work. And so you need to figure out how to love what you do. Because if you can't, your art will never fulfill you. I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. You see, with Van Gogh's work, we love it because we believe that there was a sense of deep fulfillment that was brought on by what he made. Even though no one ever wanted it, he just made it. We like to think that he found peace and happiness while producing his artwork. So too for every artist, do we want to believe that they are on their own individual journey towards fulfillment and the picture that we purchase, own, love and cherish is a step on the journey towards that. And Chad, good to have you in here Chad. And Ellie, that's exactly what we're after here. Appreciate you Harold. Um, starry night in person, yeah. Um, so if you are just joining, I'll say again, this is a singular emotion. AI generated us a picture. I'm painting that picture using the AI shot as a reference. The prompt I gave AI was a singular human emotion. So there's only one emotion in this picture. Well, you may see more. We've been talking about that. We've been talking about that. But there's one, one above all else that you believe that uh, that you'll be able to see. Now, that's our greys, greys and blacks, teals, ochres. Two more cups. In one of these last cups, we're going to put white, pure white. And then. One of the subtle touches we'll add in is just a little bit of yellow. Lemon yellow, so it's softer. Which AI? I use Dali. So, Dali 3 off Chatbot GBT. 
and that's my favourite to use. <laughs> On the toilet. Well, well, if that's where you feel this emotion, then yes, 100%. It's exactly the intentions. Cheers, Alex. Um, but no, it's a yesterday. Yesterday we were doing MV. So today I'm not doing the polar opposite of it, but uh, we are taking an approach where we can yin yang backwards and forwards. And one fun thing about this picture too. So you know how I was talking about egg tempera. There's egg temper in this work, obviously. With the emotion. <laughs> hey, crazy, how you doing? That's true, that's true. Next time, next time I'll call it guess the uh, emotion. Because we've got a few to get through. Now, I was going to say, Uh, trail of thought gone. Nah, trail of thought's completely gone. You like the detail? <laughs> well, it's all thanks to a makeup brush. Kind of fun. Oh, that's right, sorry. It's egg tempera, but it's made with a singular egg. So, all the paint that's been applied right now, raw pigment, guar gum, distilled water, but there's a singular egg that emulsifies, causing the paint to um, coagulate on the surface and seal it so it doesn't continually activate when I paint over it and over it. But I've been trying to whittle it down from several eggs down less and less and less until we get just a singular egg and we're there. Did you post the finished product of Envy? Yes, I didn't post on uh, TikTok, which I'll, I'll do it later on. I posted the finished product on Instagram. So if you go to the uh, link in my bio for TikTok, there's a link to Instagram. And from there, you can go through and see it. I uploaded the AI picture and my picture. So you can see both. My spouse and I see art differently. Me, color and energy, and she sees expression and action. Well, that's fantastic. So you both see a piece and appreciate different things from it. Sounds like a good healthy relationship. We both bring different things to the table. Your local art store closed down, didn't have any egg tempera or materials to make any. Well, egg tempera is fantastic because it's just egg. And then you can order the powdered pigments online or you can use gouache. I'm using a specific kind of gouache paint, pure gouache paint to actually allow the pigment to blend in with the tempera Remember though that gouache paint is a much thicker, heavier pigment compared to the likes of uh, powdered egg tempera pigment. So the results you'll get is more matte, but stronger, 
boulder color. Be prepared for that. Did you make or create this canvas as well? Uh, this isn't a canvas. This is a masonite board. So this is actually oil-tempered hardboard. I didn't create the board. I purchased it. But I did prepare it. That's why it's white. Added the uh, gessoed layer to it. What's our time at, team? 11.56. Masonite, lovely. Masonite is lovely. It's strong, long lasting. It's like the Rolls Royce of the MDF world. MDF will last years, maybe. Masonite can last centuries. Okay, we'll pause there for a moment while I have myself some uh, lunch. Ooh. Aha. Cheers, Steve. Um, yeah, so you can purchase canvases pre-made as well, but um, best if you are gonna purchase the canvas pre-made to gesso it yourself. They spray the gesso on, and it's not as great as it would be if it was applied by you with a brush. You lose the texture, and sometimes it's not as thick on the surface. Um. <laughs> Cheers, Chad. Well, there's lots of old advice on how to do it. Old painting books which talk about how to use masonite and prepare it. Rubbing alcohol, sanding them, gessoing them, rabbit skin and glue, which is a very old technique. I use acrylic polymer, but the old masters used rabbit skin glue. Mmm, better than yesterday, Jake, but still needs work. And hello, Cindy, welcome on in. Mmm. <laughs> Cheers, Lauren. Um, since AI only got 10 seconds, I'm going to give myself a day. So we've got another... I mean, I'm not how far. I'm not sure how fast I can thread the needle, but two or three hours. Mm. My training and studying is an eclectic mixture of both. Um, there was a bit of art school in there. There was art history. There was philosophy. There was private tutoring. There was all sorts, but the. Um, I used to say early in the piece, one of the most biggest influences, most biggest influences, one of the biggest influences I had was the peers that I had in my life. Um, people who walk beside you, people who you work with, you're friends with, you have a beer with, you, you know, these people are the ones who have the most drastic impact on your craft. Um, their honesty and their perceptions on what you're doing, because instead of them just seeing the result and saying that's good art, that's bad art, they'll look at how you made it and who you are and they'll say, they'll notice this makes him or her happy, that didn't. And they'll push you, push you as friends and peers towards things that make you happy and away from things that have a negative impact on who you are. So with that in mind, Yes, tutors are great. Yes, universities are great. Yes, training and courses this is all great. But when it comes to actually making you the greatest artist you can be, and I mean that, it's your peers and those who love you. They're those who help you and guide you towards what you love. 
Mm. Cindy, this style is pretty unique and weird. Some people love it and some people hate it. It may not be your style, but you'll have your own unique style, something special and unique to you. And I'm not sure what that is because I can't see your art from here, but it's worthy of being cherished and someone will look at your art and say exactly what you have said. I wish I could do it like that. But I don't look enviously at other artists' work, like hyper-detailed landscape artists or abstract artists, postmodern artists, sculptures, and think, I wish I could be them. Instead, I celebrate what that individual, that beautiful mind, that beautiful hand could, could create and bring into this world for me to view. And then in turn, go back to what I do and try and supercharge it and make it as much me as I can make it to therefore, or to try and inspire other people to then pursue who they are to a greater extent. And that's not just for artists, that's for skateboarders, surfers, builders, plumbers, electricians, everyone, everyone. Art's not the end result that you should have to, you should want or um, think it's piously better than everything else. Art's the catalyst and if you're an electrical engineer for example, art can be the thing that supercharges you to replenish you to then do what you do far greater. It's not better than electrical engineering. <laughs> it's just used in the same way you would a coffee to supercharge what you do. Alex, for the longest of time. How many years have I been painting? Like forever, but um, forever. I'm 31 right now. And um, I've been full-time art for a couple of years. I'm not sure how many years now. A while. You'd probably still call me emerging, I suppose. I mean, because artists work in terms of like several decades. Um, anything under 40 years old, and you'd say he's an emerging artist. <laughs> Which is kind of cool, because it means when you're doing art, you're in it for the long haul. Um, I like that. But... The emerging artist thing also sounds funny. It's like artists are coming into existence as if, like a lot of artists early in their careers typically say that their best art was early without influence when they were alone and raw. That was when it was most special. So to say emerging is to say that what you're making now is more educated and better. I'm not sure if that's always true. Quite a bit younger than 31. Fair enough. I got ID'd in the supermarket yesterday. I was with my best friend and his kid. And he's got grey hair. And You know, anyway, they, they said, no, no, show me your ID, mate. It did with that attitude, Cindy. I think... It's interesting actually, I saw in an event with a bunch of people, um, there was a reel on it, just uh, everyone painting to get on these giant canvases. Um, and everyone had uniquely different styles. And there was one girl there who had the most unique style of everyone. It was an attention to detail and um, continuous, meticulous brush strokes. And the medium we were using was my medium, which was, in that case, for this particular course, acrylic, mixed with large amounts of gel to be smooth, large strokes. Well, that is like trying to measure a bird's ability to swim. And so she was in this painting session and felt like, I can't paint, why am I wrong? And she diverted all the signs inwards and said, there's something wrong with me because everyone else's paintings look great, my one doesn't. When actually her meticulous, methodical style would lend itself perfectly to something like, um, I told her this, was uh, Pollock. You see, Pollock, <laughs> if you compared Pollock in a room full of artists, you'd be like, well, 
he's the weird one, right? No one likes his art. You'd look at Pollock and actually say, no, 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 Pollock had a very big understanding of the overall picture and he would methodically work with splats of paint until he created balance across the surface of the image. And so it's less about can you do art? Um, can you do this? Yeah, abstract, perfect, Pollock. <laughs> less about that and it's more about what is my medium? Because since art is self-expression, when you say, I can't do art, you're saying, oh, I don't have feelings, I don't express myself, I'm a, I'm a golem, I, uh, I'm a statue, I, I'm an AI robot, I don't have feelings. It's outrageous, outrageous premise. What's more the case is you haven't fully discovered what form you use to express yourself. And sometimes it's not even visual art, sometimes it's something like dance, um, pottery, um, singing. Every person has their own medium in which to produce who they are. Everyone has their own medium in which they can actually manifest their own individuality and being into this world. Mine, like, I'm a terrible singer, some of you guys know that. Um, and dancing, not great. Mine's a very visual medium, very primal medium. Hey Brody, from the UK. All right. Okie dokie, okie dokie. <laughs> I have read a lot of books. Philosophy books, my favorite philosopher. Out of the whole world, my number one is uh, Bertrand Russell. He's a 21st century philosopher and um, absolute, absolute legend. He's very boring for a lot of people. For me, I find him absolutely fascinating. What a legend. I've never, ever, 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 ever been to the UK. Um, the name doesn't ring a bell, sorry Steve. Did I just bump that painting out of the shot? I think I did. <laughs> no, wait. There we go, how are we looking there? Oh yes. Yes it does. New Zealand trails behind a little bit with our um, our art scene. We basically whatever's happening in America or the UK or Europe, we're five years behind that. So we're we're I mean a lot of galleries would spit the ball if they heard this, but we're sort of just starting to really accept the. Uh, how to say this without upsetting anyone. I'll say it this way. In Ponsonby here in Auckland, there is only one street art gallery. One. Now, I'm not saying street art's the be-all end-all, but I'm saying that if you go to America or New York, these things are on every corner. These are all over the show. Jules, thanks for joining in. I'll catch you later. And um, I'll post what the result comes out as tonight sometime. So when you wake up, you'll see it. With a bit of luck. All the best, Jules. We'll catch you later. Older lady who uses a lot of colour. Well, she sounds like she'd be right up my alley. Cheers to Davey. Appreciate you. And that bit, oh, and Brody. Keep this seat for a little bit longer while that food digests. Mm. 
uh, woke up this morning. Supposed to go to the uh, for a run and the early hours, and I did not. Too lazy. I think last night I had a little bit of uh, sleep apnea, which completely knocks you out the next morning. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about the UK. It depends. New Zealand's a lovely place. The world has lots of lovely little pockets in it. My favourite little pocket anywhere in the world? San Sebastian. San Sebastian. What a beautiful place on planet Earth. Visit Spain. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, sorry to hear that, Brody. And cheers, Steve. I appreciate that. Cronwick. I have not seen Pam Watson's artwork. She sounds lovely, though. Kim, this is going to be a collection. So, the collection is going to capture one emotion. Each painting. Yesterday was envy. Today, we're on another one. Thanks, Dakota. Appreciate you, mate. Don't worry, hi. We'll upload the entire replay. You won't miss a thing. And we've only been here for about 90 minutes, so... Kindness B. Reference picture and permission. Well, this reference picture is a little bit unique because while we ask the question of who gets permission for it, this is a collaboration with AI. So I've asked AI to generate me a picture of an emotion and with its breadth of human understanding and all the text and images it's ever seen, it's developed me this picture and now, I'm using this picture to do my rendition of it. And in between my rendition and AI's interpretation, we have this conversation. Who captured it? Who did it better? Is it the emotion that was intended? Is it something else? We've had some very, very interesting talks so far We've been talking about whether it's pleasure, pain, 
and then someone came in, Sandra, I think it was, as a joke, and said, I think it's this. And it was funny because I said, that is the correct answer. She says, are you kidding me? I was joking. It's funny because she saw, saw that as the most outlandish possible emotion to be represented. And it was the exact one that was represented. So that happens sometimes. Um, ooh, a working holiday visa. If you had come to New Zealand, I think three months is great. This is the sort of place you come to and stop. You'll regret not being here for longer. <laughs> he definitely stepped on a Lego. Possibly. Um, in terms of the art, this stuff here will be available, yes. But not until they're all finished. So we're doing this one. We'll finish this one today. I'm giving one day for each emotion. One day for each emotion. And and after that's good Brody I'm excited for you New Zealand is a lover New Zealand's a lovely place there we go Um, it's an exciting plan you've got, Brody. The interesting thing about this picture too is that the eyes are a fair bit higher for me. So I have to really go up there. There we go. The only thing stopping you is money. Well, luckily there's plenty of ways to make it.
need a little step ladder. Me too, Brody. One day. One day. We may need to actually uh, lower this down ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. to fit this whole thing in. There we go. Just so I can actually uh, <laughs> reach the whole thing. Thanks, Bertie. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Jay Smith. We're on the way. We're not there yet, but we're on the way. What kind of brand jeans? Whatever it is uh, for two dollars at the local op shop. You can see I've already ruined these ones. That's a big blotch of um, blue. Some purple there. So they were good. They're ruined now. Should have actually uh, thrown them out and uh, got a new pair. But anyway, we've got them. Cheers, Birdie. Ah, uh, no, cheers, Brody. Well, <laughs> he's like, what? Hey Seth, we're painting the motion.
Gilbert, you're struggling to come up with painting ideas, and Seth, how do you usually go about starting the initial drawing? I'll tell you what, that'll all make sense when I, uh, a lot of these drawings are available on YouTube. I'll post this one probably tomorrow morning and you can see from start to finish or just the start how we get it going because that can be quite confusing for a lot of people. How does it go from nothing to something? It's an interesting question. In terms of coming up with ideas too, one thing I like to do is start something. So this idea we're doing now, collaborating with AI, the growth of this idea, this concept and what it is, didn't just come because I sat down and suddenly had an epiphany. I started thinking something with portraits, something meaningful with portraits. And the first one you might remember was a very, very old lady. And then I wanted to do a very, very old New Zealand man. And then I thought, there's so many emotions in these pictures. So much complexity of feeling. What if I isolated emotions? And so I started trying to find faces with isolated emotions. And I thought, am I the sort of person that gets to decide what an emotion looks like? As the artist, I suppose I am, but what if I work together with everyone else? Go a step further from everyone else. What about the collective understanding of humanity from every text and image that's ever been? And then I do my own rendition from that. And thus, here we are, capturing one emotion at a time. Hey, Laura. Birdie, I like that. It's not my usual place, but uh, I'm glad it works for you. I bet it does too. Because you find people you like to follow who are pinning things. Is it an old man or an old woman? Well, if you can't tell, the question might be irrelevant. It's an emotion. And so it's funny you say that because when AI generated the emotion, if AI thought it was important to tell, maybe AI would have made it more obvious. AI didn't. So there's enough of its answer in itself. There's uh, the group from, um, uh, there's the group from, what are they called? Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Dwarf Qu Queen had a beard in that. So I would go as far as to say a beard would say it had to be a man. A lot of men can't grow beards. <laughs> so, factor that in. 
Yeah, I've been enjoying that the fact that it's got that Willie Nelson look to it. Fitting for the emotion. We need some more white. We always need more white in this picture. <laughs> it's a very bright image, but we keep leaning towards those dark ochres. It's dangerous territory. Now, I can't read that name. I've come real close here. Pastel. So I appreciate the love. It's going to need slightly more of that warm yellowish glow. Thank you, appreciate that guys. Clued, you can find them all over the show. One of the best places to find them is on, um, I use Dali. So if you're trying to find inspiration in terms of, um, if you're trying to find inspiration in terms of you want someone else to tell you what to paint, Dali's the worst. If you know what you need, Dali's gonna give it to you. I need a blonde woman by the edge of a cliff with the sun setting, with this, with that, with that. And it can provide you with the perfect reference. But you need to know exactly what you're after. Exactly what you're after. Sorry, I just want to roll up my sleeves a little bit. The shirt's a bit of a funny fit. I bought it because I love the colour. But it sort of sits over the uh, shoulders. Real weird. So, be navigating that. I need to drop it off at an op shop. Just a silly purchase. All right. Is this the same Kiwi who was a hundred? Different Kiwi. Different Kiwi, different emotion. It's a very fun picture, that first Kiwi. But no, that picture was a one-time gig. Now, we're pursuing a particular emotion. In this case, I've asked AI to 
produce me a feeling. We're capturing that. Working with AI. That's how I'm viewing it. Like a collaboration. I have. It was pretty a uh, wonderful way of being introduced to Van Gogh. Helps you understand the mind frame behind his art to better connect with him as an artist. Alrighty tighty. Let's get this one here. Yeah, Tony. I did like it. I did like it. It's a pretty special exhibit, all things considered. It's funny that even outside of the actual art itself, we would make a giant exhibit. Without any of Van Gogh's art in it, it's got reproductions of it, but not the real art. To expose people to a way of thinking, it's kind of precious. Kind of fantastic. Pardon me. Do 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 Here we go. Cheers, Taylor. Appreciate that.
Hey Tardy. A little bit more white. And then we'll go back to burnt sienna. Maybe. Or it'll be in time blah, blah, blah. Time to include another wild card. Here we go. Tony, yes indeed, it is indeed. The um, Envy is all sorted. So now we're working on this one. The next emotion, let me see it from where you've got it from. <laughs> yeah, it's coming together. It's coming together. It's gonna take time, but we're having fun. Has Designs, welcome on in. And yes, this one got started. What's our time at? 12.45, this one got started at uh, 10 o'clock. Thanks, Jojo, <laughs> and cheers, Bertie. I was just, actually, it's funny you say that, I was just thinking to myself, faster, faster. You can get into this lull, and you wanna be on top of that lull, smashing it.
Painting rapidly. Throwing down emotions, entering that flow state. Get so quickly caught up into a hypnotized, slow environment. We don't want that. We want to enter that flow state, empower it, supercharge it, and then create. That top corner is right there at the limit. <laughs> oh, it's getting the shoulder. Mo, how you doing? Um, at the moment, there's nothing available. The studio is completely sold out, but this collection we're working on, we might do 10. So, we're doing one a day, there'll be 10 total. So, they should be available early March. Prints should be back up mid-February. But at the moment, there's nothing you can buy. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, Betty. But sometimes that's relaxing, right? Relaxing to produce artwork at your own pace and slowly let it take shape. That's cool, Tony. Congratulations. I like that. No way you would just... Uh, Steve, my mother had a paintbrush in my hand from, when, from a very young age. But um, I think everyone's got their own unique style. And then from there, the craft aspect, how often do you pursue it? Like even for me, I find when I try and produce portraits after being out of practice for a while, they don't have that same zest to them. I get annoyed at them. I'm like, you're not what I wanted to make. Why don't you look like what I need? And that craft aspect comes from doing repetition. The ability to create art or create what, you're, what you see inside your head. So a lot of us have these dreams of what we want to produce but the ability for the hand to make it or bring it to reality, that's another question. And you need to give your hand that ability to produce whatever it is it wants to produce so that that way you can use that to make whatever it is you want to make. Because you're going to go through enough psychological difficulty battling with what to paint, how to paint, who to paint, who to show it to, that you can't risk not being able to make it with your hands, getting in the way. That should be the one thing that shouldn't be a problem. Once you've figured out what you want to make, your hands should be your slaves or your dance partner, able to make you whatever you need to make. Uh, it's already too complicated for your hands not to be able to do anything.
<laughs> hey, Colin. Um, it's given Britney Spears. All right. That's good. LA Fitness. You ever consider just joining up so you can go along? Enjoy the building? Hey Jeff, welcome in. All right, what's the next color going to be? You have gone there? That's good. <laughs> um, hey, user. So the print shop will be out mid this month. It's in about 10 or 14 days. Um, there'll be a couple of new ones in there, and the couple of the old ones, nothing that's been sold out will reappear in the print shop. So a lot of the stuff, especially um, old school prints, were quite limited edition, so they're gone, gone. Not just gone, but gone, gone. Um, who in family paints? Just me. Just me. Right. Let's have a little look -see in here. Feel a sneeze coming on. Brace yourselves, it might be loud. <coughs> oh. Hmm. Sorry, team. All right. Got my next two colors here. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Jay. I feel blessed. Just some very, very subtle notes coming in here. Subtle enough that you could miss them. Combine it with a bit more pale colour. Beautiful. 
Did you take a break to eat lunch? Yeah, we did. I smashed that protein shake, which uh, ticked a few boxes for me. So now we're back to it. I wouldn't mind a coffee though, but um, there's instant coffee just outside the studio. So if I get desperate, I might grab a little coffee, but right now we're just trucking along. Bear in mind that this is a battle of attrition more than it is a uh, get the energy and smash the painting out. There's a battle of attrition in that I get one go. One full long session. After this, after I'm finished here, this painting is considered finished. So that actually means that I have to conserve energy Paint strategically from the heart, always from the heart, but always be considering, right, how are we feeling? Are we hydrated? Are we energetic? Are we well fed? Do we have nutrients? Whatever it might be, making sure we have everything we need to produce the art. Tony. Well, I was watching Dak Reacher, which I thoroughly enjoyed, but that's all through now. The next stage now is eh, sometimes go for a jog, answer emails, all the basic stuff. <laughs> Would you expect something really exciting? Runs off and rides unicorns in his spare time? No. I'll, uh, I'm gonna make dinner tonight. So that's one thing. It's gonna be chicken. Which will be exciting. Whew. How's our face looking? Yeah, it's coming together, it's coming together. We definitely have that lift, which is important. There's a vertical aspect to it. Our biggest catch right now is I'm a little bit short, so I can't quite reach the uh, top of the painting as effectively as I'd like to, but um, we're making good ground. We're making good ground. Yeah, we're in a good place. That's a good place. Do I like to cook? I like feeding people. I don't think that, I wouldn't take that as I like to cook. Cooking's fine, don't get me wrong. But it's more of a utility for me. I far prefer to have a bunch of happy people with full tummies. You wanna see the reference picture user? All right, one condition. You've got to guess the emotion first. You guess the emotion, I'll show you the reference picture. No cheating, no cheating. If you know what the emotion is already, because I've told you or you've heard from the crowd, don't just tell user what it is. And in terms of how long I've spent painting, I've been painting all my life, but you can get my uh, eclectic history via the link in my bio. I think I need to update my uh, About Me page too, but, um, which is a funny thing to say, because it's about the past. So it's like, I need to update my past. <laughs> but I think I just, um, when you hear people talk about it and ask about it, you're like, okay, that's landing, that's not landing, that needs working on. Like, quite disturbing. When do you know it's done? Yeah, it's a nice day outside. The picture's quite disturbing? I'm sorry about that. It's not supposed to be.
quite disturbing, more pain than ecstasy. <laughs> That's good. I mean, not that you find it disturbing, but um, I like that you see pain because like we were talking about earlier, two sides of the same coin. So whereas you see pain, someone else might see ecstasy. That risen head, those palms coming in. Let me bring the uh, tablet in here. Voila. So there's our individual. And uh, one thing that happens when you see the uh, intensity of the brush strokes that I do, the brashness of them, the smooth in this, which brings in that piece into the picture. So the happiness comes through in the smoothness of the brush strokes, the air strokes made by the uh, um, AI. And then the sharpness of my brush strokes may bring in that little bit of uh, pain or create that sort of dual outcome where you can see both in the same image. There we go. Thank you, appreciate that. So, it's good. The fact that you're seeing those things, feeling those emotions, means that as we slowly tranche towards our conclusion, we've got the correct emotions or the correct ingredients in place to make this picture. Cheers, Charlotte. Appreciate you. You see both? That's good. And that's all what we want. Um, I'm not intending to capture one or the other. I want to capture what the AI did. And so with my style, with its sharp, abrupt, primal brush strokes, and then with AI's depiction, we get this quite interesting commentary. And just like with Envy, it was less about the emotion we were capturing and more about everyone's reaction to what they thought the emotion was. There's a story and a dialogue, a conversation that takes place. And that's what we're after. That's what we're trying to capture here. Cheers, Alexander. I appreciate you. this chair and come down lower again. One perspective and one reality.
Yeah. We were talking about this earlier. The importance of the observer. And the uh, success or failure. Probably the wrong word for it. Of the final creation. But um, there's an interesting commentary there too. Being that with the likes of... Um, Van Gogh or Monet, there wasn't observers until long after they passed. Not observers of good note. Like, when I say good note, I mean not huge amounts of people. So without any observers, they were able to stay steadfast to their beliefs and their creations and build them completely separate from external feedback and yet now we see it we love all their art and wouldn't judge a single piece in a negative light that's called understanding yourself down to your core your artistry to be so convinced you have it right even when the world turns its back or never turns its head towards you it's probably more what it's like Less the world turning its back and more the world just never noticing. How's my dog? Barnaby's good. Haven't seen him in a while. But he's good.
Big yawn. Big yawn for a little man. Um, Mandy, it's an interesting one. Uh, Charlotte, I try to paint every day. And Mandy, it's interesting you say that. But, um, in terms of the human experience, I don't think the AI would, I know we would think that maybe experience and life is for the youth, but AI would know better than us that actually life experience probably increases your ability to feel true ecstasy. And so that being said, probably the representation of age and ecstasy. The AI thinks very little about it. In fact, in its commentary of why it made the decisions, it barely even mentioned age. It's interesting. Farah, welcome on in. Our subject looks tormented, tormented. Hey Farah. Someone guess? We have had a few correct guesses. Alrighty, Tardy. It made me think of the inevitable. Very powerful. Powerful. That's interesting. Well, I know what we need. More white. Cheers, sea salt. It's, um... It's an interesting one, and I had a feeling 
with the angle of it, the lack of eyes and the angle might come off as something quite um, innately negative, but it's uh, interesting how it is just two sides of the same coin. Whew. All right. And out of interest sake, guys, this whole picture right now has been made with these lovely, lovely, is it going to show up for me in high def? Yeah, there we go. It's made with fancy little makeup tools. They're quite dexterous. This is a brow maker. There we go. Brow. Um, they don't carry the same brush length in terms of the strokes, but actually when applying paint, it's much better for the sort of scratching method that I'm using. Anyway. Anyway. White. White. There we go. Hello from Thailand. Cheers, Mandy. It's, um, it's funny, actually. My partner, Shelby, was throwing away a bunch of her makeup stuff. And one of the things she was throwing away was a bunch of her uh, makeup brushes. So I saw them, and this little penny just dropped, not the full way, just was like... I was like, that's a brush. Ah, that's a brush. And then it sat in my painting bag for a while until eventually I was like, you know what? Let's try and use it. And when I did, I thought to myself, there is no reason not to use that. That is a perfect brush. One of the things I've noticed more with these than regular painting brushes, the bristles never come out. I suppose because if you were applying foundation and bristles were coming out, you'd be furious at the equipment. But uh, I haven't had any brushes come off in the artwork, which is testament to it. Definitely handy for me. me. Getting just a little bit of acid reflux. We get some quickies on the way home. Very innovative, <laughs> yeah, cheers. And Nino, thanks mate. It's, um, it's coming along well. I do wonder, I always wonder at these stages if it's gonna come out looking similar to its current form or whether it's actually a cocoon and it's about to explode. into something fairly new. It's always hard to know.
right at the top there, just keeping that pure white in there. <laughs> Have I ever considered that? Maybe I do. Maybe that's what happens in the other 24 hours when I'm not streaming. <laughs> no. Um, paints, not this paint, but uh, painting can be a little bit toxic, so you're best to wear an apron or uh, keep certain types of paint away from your body. coming along with this picture. Question is what else it needs. I want another brown tone I think. Another brown tone. Ooh, not before I actually get this last little bit in here. Cheers, Jay. Appreciate that, mate. All righty, tighty. I wonder if I have just the color I'm looking for. I think it's this one. I think it's this one. Hey, user. Uh, yes, they are. But currently, the studio is completely sold out. So, if you're after a painting, You'll have to wait a few weeks. Paintings and prints. Prints should be back up 10 days. Paintings, we should have some originals of this collection available in at 
in in the month. Alrighty, and Mandy, welcome to the team. <laughs> Let's have a little look-see here, team. A little experiment to figure out how we're getting on. Oh, thanks, DJ Sen. I'm absolutely over the moon to hear that. I'm glad I could be a part of the journey you're on. To regain that inner child. It's pretty special. Don't stop trying to grab that child either. That inner child. It's important to keep that as a part of who you are. Here we go. Interesting. So here is 
<laughs> G'day, hi. Here we have the original picture. This is the emotion of... <laughs> well done, Velnist. Well done. Um, here's the original picture. And then... Oh, wrong one. Here is the re-indition. So we go between them. We've got the human, imperfect, crazy, wild, versus the computer. Now the question we're asking ourselves is what we think we need to add, if anything. I kind of like it, to be honest. I kind of like it. Do we add to it? I don't know if we do. I think I like it the way it is. I think that's fun. I've got a temptation to continue to add to it. But it's in a really fun space. And even the, the hairs at the top, their spindly sort of nature is sort of cheeky. Cheeky and fun. I think we'll keep it like that. Jeepers. <laughs> John. You decided on the original palette. Yes. You're up late, John. You're up very late. It's a funny image. It's a funny image. The, uh, it almost comes off very different in that the original with the hands pushing it up makes it feel like uh, um, with the hands pushing it up it makes it feel like uh, there was a moment of euphoric pleasure and in this one yin yangs for me sometimes I actually see the slightly thinner neck and the sort of strangulation of pleasure um, let me show you the it almost feels like it's a, it's a, do I say bobblehead cartoon that's been, you know, condensed here. Almost like a, um, the screen painting. And uh, one thing I really like about it is up the top here, how it goes really, really wild and it gets that sort of abstract spindly nature to his head. Um, so we have this one. And this one. I certainly let uh, proportions fly out the window a little bit more in favor of actually capturing the colors and those finer features. Like if you look at the eyes there, I really accentuated the, uh, the wrinkles in them and the asymmetry. I really wanted that asymmetry. AI has this tendency, if you look in this picture here, of balancing everything. No person who gets to this age, if they close their eyes, has this perfectly level eye line. I sleep on my left hand side and my left eye droops more than my right. And I'm 31. That's gonna be chronic by the time I'm 71. So in that perfection made by the AI, I try to completely ignore it. And because of that, you'll notice my eye lines, this one shoots on about 15, 10 degrees and this one's flat, completely different in that sense. Desired, wanted, got it. 
<laughs> Cheers, Farah. Reminds me of a tree trunk. I like that. I like that. We'll sit with it for a moment. I might grab a coffee. Um, I think... There's this... Oh, there, there's this part of me which is... Um, basic, naughty, can, uh, this, this, this urge as an artist that I have to just add ultramarine into everything. I'm looking at this picture right now and there's this voice inside me, this unhelpful voice, or helpful, saying, add ultramarine. You love ultramarine, put it in the picture. Put it in the picture. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> Make them unique. <laughs> Cheers, John. You're an absolute legend, mate. Um, so I'm battling, I'm battling with that little thing at the moment. And yes, I agree, Moody Blue Eyes. Hold the fire. Because I think this picture didn't start with Ultramarine. Adding it now is weird. It's, um, it's tealy, pastely, greenish, yet ochre. Ochre is the most key color in this. Burnt Sienna and ochre and that white punching out of the top, those natural raw pigments and colors. I think that's where the ecstasy needs to be fundamentally based around. Not, not colors like uh, synthetic ultra, it's a, it, in fact, no, that's the no, that's the no, it's, it's a synthetic ultramarine. If I had real ultramarine from the rock, ground down, worth its weight in gold, I'd probably add it, because it's natural but all these colors are raw earth pigments. So all this color that's making up ecstasy is soils. We're talking uh, minerals and we're talking um, clays from the earth, our raw siennas, our burnt ochres. Um, and I think that's kind of fun. It's a fun touch that we shouldn't impact with ultramarine. Um, Oh, Farah, I think we'll have the coffee and consider if we uh, develop further. I left it with black lines, and now the black lines are gone. There's still a few of the black lines, Diane. Um, the light up the top obscures them, but at the top there, I'd like to say it was intentional. I just couldn't quite reach. <laughs> um, it, I did lower it down uh, about halfway through, but at the very top there, there's this, the black lines that we added are still there, and they've turned into what sort of comes off like spindly hairs. And I had enough white, and I've got a stupid amount of teal and things that actually fit the color palette that would be up there. Something tells me there's a charm to those spindly lines. It adds to the age aspect of it, so I think we'll leave that, but that's um yeah i love it when a few of those spindly lines sneak through because it's it sort of captures the whole process from start to finish it's kind of pretty it's kind of pretty anyway hang fire for a moment guys chill i'm gonna go grab a coupe um congratulations guys we made it to we're about to make it to 35,000 likes, which is really cool for ecstasy. Um, and I like the fact that, do you know what I really like about this one? My favorite thing about this one, you'd be like, you've had five favorite things, so you can't have a sixth. We're gonna do it. My favorite thing about this one is ecstasy. If I said, what's ecstasy? You would have predispositions. You would think this, you would think that, you would um, imagine a big colorful pink picture. This is anything but. This is not that. This is a view on ecstasy that creates conversation and it's thought provoking. And I think we come away from this picture with a better understanding of ecstasy than before we saw it. And I think that's what art's for. And therefore, even though it's not like, it's funny because what would combine, what I subconsciously sometimes combine, g'day NZ Frog, combine ecstasy with is, um, <laughs> Sorry, Ballard. Fair enough. Um, I combine ecstasy with beauty. And that, and like someone said earlier in the comment section, um, they imagined ecstasy would be a, a youthful person. And that com combination of ecstasy and beauty is a mistake. That's come from social conditioning, that's come from culture, and that's confused. 
Um, and this causes me to challenge that and actually see ecstasy as something that doesn't belong to a person as much as it belongs to each of us and our ability to feel it. So I reckon that's great. Anyway, guys, um, coffee, a bit more of a gaze because after we've finished it, I'll be less inclined to touch it. These are one day paintings. So we get the day and I don't want to hang up the phone and then come on later and be like, I changed my mind. Um, but I do really like where it's at. I like the eyes. I like the nose, the mouth. And that we didn't, I like these cheeks, the cascading colors, the reach that I'll, I'll shut up now, but I like it. I like it. It's interesting. Cheers, Abe. And do we still have John here or did John bail? It's a fun series. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a bit unique. So previously when we've been doing, John, you're here, perfect. Um, you were saying you like the series as well. Fantastic. Because tomorrow is going to be special. I previously have been showing you guys the um, uh, reference image when I start and then talking about the uh, emotion as I make it. Tomorrow is gonna be a wee bit different. We're not gonna start with a uh, reference image and we're not gonna start by talking about it. Uh, we will talk, but I'm gonna keep that hidden and we're gonna go through the process similar to today where we each come to our own conclusions of what that emotion is. Um, so rather than saying tomorrow I'm doing ecstasy or tomorrow I'm doing envy, I'll know it, I'll choose it tomorrow and we'll all go on that journey together. Um, you should know how immensely helpful it is um, as I'm painting to hear the feedback from you and hear what emotions you're feeling, seeing, wanting, um, what you do see and what you don't see and how that impacts, not in the way I paint, but my confidence or, um, or what's the word here, steadfastness. To, it impacts my intention as I go through the process. Um, a lot of the times when you're painting, if you've done your own creative pursuits, you'll know this, when you get into that flow state and get buried in it, you almost want to pull back for a moment because you're afraid, um, afraid that you might be ruining it in your enjoyment of that flow state and to be able to turn around and get the confirmation that I see this, I see that, what's that, I feel this, that lets you know that I'm not quite sure what's happening, I'm in the flow state and I can't quite ascertain the whole picture but a viewer, an onlooker is able to connect with me and provide me the feeling that's being created so although I can't see the overall picture like say you can from the distance, I can know that we're heading in the right direction. Sort of like wearing a blindfold and hitting golf balls and someone saying, yes, you're heading in the right direction. I've got no idea where the golf ball went, but you're helping me. <laughs> Terrible example, but the point we're trying to make there. Anyway, guys, I've got a few emails to fire off and a few bits and pieces to sort out. Um, like I was saying, prints will be back up in about 15 days, 10 to 15 days. And with a bit of luck, depending on how we go with the series, we might be able to have this series on the website come March, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. But it's been an absolute pleasure, guys. This has been fun. And I will see all you lovely people, if I'm lucky, uh, tomorrow for our mystery emotion um which where do we go from i mean it's gonna be interesting because we did envy and then we did uh ecstasy two e's and the question is when you do these two extremes i don't know maybe it's gonna be one of those grayer middle emotions I don't know. It's going to keep me up tonight. But anyway, guys, look after yourselves. I wish you all the best from here in NZ. And I look forward to hanging out again soon. Wherever you are, have a great day or a very, very great night.
Cheers, guys. Bye now. Oh. I've got paint on my thumb, so I can't push the button. This is that awkward... Uh... <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye.